I got to bring home the turkey lady. It's good to see some old friends this morning. And maybe we'll make some new friends today. Everybody is welcome here. Here we go. I'm in the right place at the right time. Just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. Just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. Just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. Just where I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome Loud and clear, my soul is welcome here. If you're joining us online, good morning. We're glad you're here. And we're really glad our special guest, all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina, Reverend Christy Snow. Yeah! I'm in the right place at the right time, just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time, just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time, just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time, just where I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome. All right, how about a big unity of Savannah hand for Reverend Christy Snow? Good morning. Woo, it's good to see you. What I know about you is that you are full of love and you're full of light. And I believe you want to affirm that with me. So here we go. I am love and light. I am free to fly. I am love and light. Free to fly, free to fly, free to fly. I am a heart in action. I am love's compassion. I am a heart of passion. I'm love. I claim it. Sing it with me now.
free to fly Thank you for singing with us Welcome to Unity of Savannah. I'm Reverend Dale Worley. Unity of Savannah is a center for spiritual awakening where we recognize God as life, love, and the ground of all being. And we celebrate God by what? Living fully, loving lavishly, and being all that we can be. Would you please join me in an opening prayer? Just take a deep breath. Turn your attention within for a moment. We turn away from outer concerns in this moment and we turn our attention to God. Just relax into this moment, continue to breathe and feel the presence of God. We know God as life and love and beingness. So feel your inner being light up as you place your attention on it. Feel that light clearing your mind. And feel love opening your heart. And this beingness that is God is surrounding us now wherever we are. In this sanctuary, in our homes, in our cars, wherever we are, God is. And so feel that presence envelop you now as your inner presence responds. And if there's a person or a situation that you wish to lift up in prayer this morning, bring that to your mind now and know that your dear one is enfolded in love just as we are, for God is everywhere present all the time. If there's a situation or circumstance that you would like to bless, just know the presence of God is love and harmony moving in and through the situation now, bringing forth the highest good. And so we release our prayer now on the wings of love and allow it to do its perfect work according to divine law. And because we allow it and we have declared it, and so it is. Amen. Amen. So in that same prayerful consciousness, I would invite you to please affirm our vision, mission, and purpose statements with me this morning. Let's begin with our vision together. We connect through the energy of joy and oneness. Our mission together, we embrace a positive, loving, and uplifting approach to spirituality and our purpose. We are an inclusive spiritual community. Amen. And so it is. So we're very grateful to have Reverend Christy Snow with us from the Carolina Center for Spiritual Awakening in Charlotte, North Carolina. She is the founding pastor and the spiritual director of that community and also a dear friend of mine. Please give her another round of applause and welcome her to our community today. She's going to be sharing a message of hope and faith with us today because it's the first day of Advent. Did it feel like we just blew through Thanksgiving and slid into Christmas? Here we are. 
So we're going to light a candle in a moment to represent the first day of Advent, which is hope and faith. <laughs> it's interesting. We have a little um, Advent book that you can take with you. So there's some on the back table. There's some in the lobby as you come in. And we actually have two words. It used to be hope, then we changed it to faith, and now it's hope and faith. I was thinking, will those unity people please make up their minds? What is it? Hope, faith, hope and faith. <laughs> but I think Reverend Christie is going to clear that up for us this morning. So uh, we're very grateful that she's here today. And don't forget that she's also doing a concert at 1.30 today. So you have time to pop out after this service for a little bite of lunch and come back at 1.30 for what, about an hour of music with uh, Reverend Christy and she's brought her Native American flute with her as well. So we're looking forward to that. So this morning we're going to light our Christ candle to, for the first day of Advent to represent the divine ideas of hope and faith. That's your cue, Miss Evelyn. What happens when you miss We're so glad you're here today. Thank you. Here as well. Thank you. Okay. Hope and Faith, Sunday, November 24th, 2021. This Advent, my hope leads me to unwavering faith in God. My belief in goodness of the world, others, myself, and God, begins with hope. Maybe hope is all I can muster after a period of doubt or disappointment. As I feel hopeful, I begin to believe that new possibilities and better outcomes are available to me. My hopeful feelings lead to faith a certainty that the goodness I could only sense before is the actual nature of life. With hope, I now direct my thoughts toward goodness, wholeness, and my heart's desires. With gratitude for my awakening, I use faith to dismantle doubt and limitations. I hold only the best thoughts for myself. I know and feel in the depths of my soul that the good I desire is already mine. With unwavering faith and deep gratitude, I claim it now. And taken from Psalm, chapter 62, verse 5. For God alone my soul awaits in silence, for my hope is from him. And won't you join me in saying this once again, for, well, this Advent, my hope leads me to unwavering faith in God. Surrender I 
So let's just take some breaths together and allow that presence to fill us. I like to place my hand on my heart because it takes my thinking mind into my heart space. So breathe and allow the music to wash over you as we move into a moment of meditation together. Resting in the space, this sacred space, <clears throat> and the sacred space of our hearts. Allow the breath to be easy and deep, consciously slowing the breath, releasing it easily, allowing any thoughts that come to just pass through, focusing on the breath and the energy of the heart. In a moment of silence.
heart center. Allow yourself this moment to just affirm. Affirm this day and affirm your life. That I live in joyful expectancy of my good. I move with peace, poise, and possibility. I'm safe to be loved and to love. Knowing there are spaces in between the happy times. Knowing this happens just like the breath and just like the thoughts and meditation, we simply allow them to be and to move through our life as we return again and again to the healing space of love. Somewhere there's a tiny ray of hope Yeah, I remember Down in the garden by the roses On a twisted vine Yeah, I remember Through the rocks and the rivers To a place place time left behind we walk we walk together in spaces we walk we walk through abandoned what have we forgotten what have we lost in all these abandoned spaces spaces of the heart what needs forgiving what's falling apart cracks in the ceilings cracks in the heart see her, I remember Hold out your hand and I'll take it It's all here now We can make it
Thank you so much. Thank you, music team. Y'all are spoiled, you know this, right? <laughs> All right. Just making sure you're aware. Uh, man, that song was going somewhere else when it was started. And right as I went into a writer's retreat with two of my bandmates who also write songs, we, we found out that um, some, a friend was going through a really, really hard time and was having just an emotional breakdown and had to be committed. And, and we were... Um, we were feeling that, right? And we were feeling our own places, our own spaces, our own... It's been a big two years, am I right? <laughs> like just all of life and then throw on top of that pandemic that just keeps on hanging on for a minute. But um, so we were feeling those places within us, you know, in the places of, of fear and doubt and sadness and grief and, and the places sometimes where you just feel like, where's the hope? Where, where is it? When is this going to... When am I going to have a, a lighter moment. And we were feeling for our friend and we were feeling that a space for our, ourselves. And we started thinking about it, you know, it's always in there. It may be packed away in a suitcase somewhere <laughs> down a, a viney path and, and hiding, but there's that, that place that's tucked away and it's that tiny ray of light, it's that hope, and it's in there, it's always in there, it's never leaving us, it's never left us, it's never going to leave us. Why? Because it is the divine spark. It is the divine moving through us, expressing as us. It created us out of its very self, this one creator by the many names. And we can never, ever be separate from it. We can feel separate from it. I know that. But <clears throat> appropriate to be singing that, I thought, today, since it is the first day of Advent. <clears throat> Goodness, I have a frog in my throat. First day of Advent. And uh, I enjoyed talking with Reverend Dale about this and how unity you know, chose hope, and then they chose faith, and now it's hope and faith. And I was like, oh, okay, I want to talk about that. That's good. That's good. But first, let's look at Advent. Advent from the Latin word Adventus, which is the coming, right? It's a preparation for the coming celebration of the birth of Christ. So in unity and science of mind, of which I'm ordained, any new thought teaching, we're looking at the coming of Christ always in the, in the way of Christ consciousness, right? Looking at how is the Christ consciousness being reborn, being born and then reborn, born and then reborn in me. So how is that Christ consciousness hmm, being born in me? And so what, what is, I mean, we use that. We use that term a lot, Christ consciousness. But if you just walked in here for the first time, you're like, wait, what? Because I was raised Southern Baptist, and the first time I heard Christ consciousness, well, first of all, I thought I was going to get struck by lightning. And... Uh, and so it took me a minute to adjust. And so I dug deeper. Like, what does that mean, that Christ consciousness? Well, first of all, Jesus, his name was Yeshua. His, the name that was given to him, Jesus, meant to save. He, he did save. He showed the way. He was a way shower and showed people how to save themselves. And then the Christ is a title. It means the anointed one, right? So back then, to be anointed meant you've been called for a special purpose and you've taken on that responsibility. So our special purpose is not to lose that spark, for starters. Not to lose sight of the fact that it's in there even when we can't see it. Not to lose, lo lose the knowing that it's in there even when we can't see it or feel it. But to, to go deeper, to continually cultivate that relationship with the divine. 
So we are all the anointed ones. We've all been given this beautiful responsibility. Our ability to respond comes from that divine spark that's always within us. Just like the beautiful, these beautiful live oaks all over the place down here. And they came from that tiny little acorn. Is that amazing or what? Why? Because there was a divine pattern inside. A divine pattern inside that knew what to do because God put it there. <laughs> Created perfectly to unfold naturally. The same is true for us. The same is true for us and sometimes we need a little help tapping into that deeper connection. Tapping into that, that okay, what is the, you know, being able to live here from that place, that point of purpose of being one with our infinite source. And so these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. So hope, hope. I understand why unity would want to stray away from that. I mean, in our dictionary, it looks it's all about wishful thinking. It's about doubt. It's uncertainty. But let me tell you something. In biblical times, the word hope meant something totally different. In biblical times, it meant more of a certainty. A, 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 not just certainty, but a, an excited, joy-filled guarantee okay so let's let's look at this word for a second let's look at the fact that in the old testament the hebrew there were two words in hebrew that that they used for hope one yakol which meant to wait to be patient and the other one tikva which was about expecting so waiting with expectancy and it was always followed by pleasure and joy so waiting with an expectancy of joy Oh, as I told Andrew, uh, 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 he said, what would you like on the screen? And I forgot what I said, but I think I said something about to, I live in joyful expectation of my good. Did I get it? Okay. Yeah. So that's hope, y'all. Living in joyful expectation of my good. Living in that place. But we get the choice to place our hope and our faith in whatever we want to place it in. Oh, wait. I was going to tell you about the New Testament before I get off on that tangent. New Testament. There was a word... E-L-P-I-S, but it sounds like Elvis. Um, or maybe that's just me and Dale when we talk about it. But anyway, so Elvis is a word that meant expectation, trust, and confidence. But it came from the root word elpo, which meant a pleasure, uh, a welcoming of something guaranteed. Now that's, I understand, you know, unity wanting to put a little more emphasis on the word faith because they're wanting you to get that you can trust the law of mind action. You can trust that divine pattern within life. You can trust, you can trust, right? That's faith. You can trust that. But I'm glad that they're bringing hope back into the picture too because hope is the fuel. It is, it's, it's the thing that, that, you know, we, it's the feeling, right? Thought plus feeling equals outcome. Y'all heard that here before from this guy over here. I know that. Thought plus feeling equals outcome. Don't be discouraged if you're new to this and you're thinking, oh, I had a bad thought. Oh, I had a bad feeling. I'm doomed. No, it's your predominant thinking and feeling nature, so you're okay. Um, so your thought, predominant thinking and feeling nature. But thinking, placing our thought and trust in the law, for example, there's our faith. And feeling that hopeful, hopeful in the sense of joyful expectancy of good, that's our feeling. So hope, it's founded in faith. Another verse that says over in Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You've heard that one all your life probably. The substance. So faith is the substance. That means hope is founded on faith. They do work together. One is trusting this divine pattern in life. And the other is just waiting for it. Wait for it. Oh, it's going to be good. But we have choice. So we can say, oh, wait for it. Or we can say, wait for it, baby, right? It's all about how we choose to put ourselves in alignment with life or not. If we're saying, I'm waiting in expectancy of my good, or I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop, you see. That's our free will, having a, having a field day there. And so hope is looking expectantly toward the future, but based on our faith in God in the present. When I thought about that, it reminded me of something I read from Deepak Chopra in one of my favorite Deepak books, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. And he said this. He called it one-pointed focused intention. One-pointed focused intention and detached awareness. And this is what he had to say about it. One-pointed intention means holding your attention to the intended outcome. Now, keep in mind, intended outcome, yes, goals are great. Could be your new house, new job, new relationship. 
could be a state of joy and peace, okay? It's whatever you are wanting to intend. So one-pointed intention means holding your attention to the intended outcome with such unbending purpose that you absolutely refuse, absolutely refuse to allow obstacles to consume and dissipate the focused quality of your attention. Let me just repeat that last part. That you absolutely refuse. Can you absolutely refuse Absolutely refuse to allow obstacles to consume and dissipate the focus quality of your attention. That's getting out of your own way. But absolutely refusing to let anything dissipate your intention for a peaceful life, a loving life, a kind life. Absolutely refusing means when you see something on Facebook you don't agree with, you're absolutely refusing to let anything come in between you and your intention for peace, your intention for harmony, your intention for kindness, your intention for cooperation. When you... You're, maybe some of you are, are just had an experience at Thanksgiving that was all joy and harmony, and maybe some of you had a different experience, right? Can you be absolutely steadfast in refusing to let any obstacle stray you from that intended outcome? And so, where's the love? Where's the love? Where's the love? Where's the love and all that? I was thinking about, you know, why, why? These three things abide. And the greatest of these is love. Well, I already talked about hope has its foundation in faith. And faith is trusting the divine pattern and the law. Trusting. And hope is about waiting expectantly in joyful anticipation for the guaranteed good that God said. It's my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Remember that? Okay. So then love. What, what, what is that, how does that play in? And I thought about it. And it made sense. Love is the catalyst for the faith and the fuel for the hope. It's the catalyst for the faith and the fuel for the hope. If you didn't love your life or someone in it or yourself or some experience, then you wouldn't have the catalyst of faith engaged and the fuel of hope engaged when you got diagnosed with something you needed to get through. Right? When, if you didn't have that... That love is the catalyst. There's so much that goes on in the world that feels unjust, that is unjust. But it's our love for humanity that activates, that is the catalyst for our faith that says stay the course, keep standing up, keep speaking up, keep doing what's right, keep being a bridge. And it fuels the hope that has you waiting in expectancy of good joyful anticipation. It's my love of nature, my love of being in peaceful places and with, with my wife and, and, and with uh, animals and just being in nature. It's my love of that, that that was the catalyst for my faith, my faith, my trust, and my, the fuel for my hope that this retreat thing that we do was going to take off. And so I just kept coming back to the love, the why, right? You've heard people say, what is your why? What is your love? What do you love? Let it be the catalyst for your faith that it's all working out as it should for your highest and greatest good. And let it be that fuel that pushes it forward, that fuel that pushes you forward as you wait patiently. But waiting doesn't mean do nothing. It also says that in the biblical times, hope was all about <clears throat> uh, making ready and making welcome. That doesn't mean doing nothing. That means do your work. So if I didn't love my spiritual community like I do, then the catalyst for faith that we have a new space coming to us, that we have the opportunity to be together again, right? It's that love of community that was the catalyst for the faith. They said, okay, you got to make it ready, you got to make it welcome. So even in the middle of a pandemic, we need to be looking for a space. Even though the numbers were down and the money was down, we need to be looking for a new space. So grateful for my board. They didn't even flinch, right? In, a, in corporate America, a board would have been like, uh, did you see the bottom line lately? We need to talk about this. You want to spend more money? <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Build it and they will come. So it's that love of community that has us, that we found this wonderful place in the heart of Noda, which as Dale said earlier, Reverend Dale said earlier, is this cool, quirky, fun place that we love dearly and it's diverse and it's eclectic. And so it's that catalyst was the love. The catalyst was the love. You get that. So 
to let your love be your catalyst to hold on, to move through, to fuel what it is that you are and wanting to experience. But it's not just about getting things. Y'all hear me on that, okay? I'm not just talking about getting the business, getting the church building, getting the house, get whatever. <clears throat> the love is the agape love. That love of the divine, feeling those spaces, that is what keeps us moving forward. That's what keeps us remembering those tiny places of hope that are tucked away. That light within us that gets dim, that's in there. It's cultivating that relationship with the divine, whether you call it God or universe or spirit, it's all the same creator. It's beautiful, it's love, and it's always within us and around us and moving through us. But if we don't take the time to cultivate that love, then we can't use it as a catalyst for our, for our faith and our uh, fuel for our hope, right? Because we've locked ourselves away <clears throat> and not participating in life, letting ourselves feel that. There's tools that we can use to do that. Prayer and meditation, big ones. Big ones. There's another one, though. I've been practicing this this past week. We, uh, we had two of our nephews visiting with us for a few days, Eli and Neo. And every night, <clears throat> I had the joy of sleepover time. They were like, you're in the middle, right, Aunt Christy? I'm like, yep, night, honey. See you later. We'll be in this room. Pinned down by a three-year-old and a five-year-old. Best cuddles ever next to my wife. Anyway, so... But every night before we go to sleep, every single time, we'd say, I'd, I would say to them, okay, so what was your favorite thing about today? What was your favorite? Oh, Mickey Mouse. Or <laughs> one day it was uh, Mickey Mouse. The next day it was ice cream. The next day it was, you know. So what was your favorite thing about today? And they would go through two or three things that was their favorite thing. And then guess what? The next day there were, I first started with one. The next day... There was two. By the end of the week, they, were, I, they wouldn't stop. They just kept saying their favorite things. See what happens. What you pay attention to, <laughs> what you praise, you raise, right? Yeah. So they were feeding yeah. the good stuff in their life. So that's a way for us to tap in and to, and, and to get back to it ourselves when we've lost it, right? Look for the beauty. Look for the good. And I promise you, when you look for the good... You look for the beauty in life. There's more to fall in love with with life. You look for the beauty... You look for the things you're grateful for, and there's more and more and more to be grateful for. And the more that you do that, the more the love, the agape love, the big love, the big, big love is moving through you because you're cultivating it with your appreciation. What you appreciate appreciates in value, right? Yeah. Something appreciating is appreciating in value. When you appreciate what you have, it appreciates in value in your life. And so coming back to that agape love, tuning in, Trusting, trusting that at the center of everything is God, at the circumference of everything is God. Know this with me right now, that the one power and the one presence that is God by many names is moving through all of its creation all of the time. In all ways, all ways, there is a presence. It is a power for good. And it's already said yes to us. God said yes. So that divine pattern for life within you that allows you to move from one side of the room to the other because your body just knows what to do. That within you that knows how to heal a cut on your skin because it's the divine pattern within. That acorn becoming the tree. Inherent in everything is the pattern needed for its fulfillment. And so I say thank you, God, in this moment for this truth, this truth that I am always held in the hands of grace, that the light of hope is always shining in me, that peace and possibility beyond my wildest dreams is always right there, a breath away. And so I claim for myself and for each of us this morning a recommitment to that ability to find the good, the beauty, the joy, and to stay with those feelings and not allow anything to interrupt that intended goal of peace, of harmony, of joy, of possibility. And so I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
I am so grateful for this truth. I'm so grateful for my life and for this ability to speak this word. And I release it on the wings of love. And so it is. Reverend Christy Snow. Christy Snow. Amen. Oh, my goodness. It feels good to be back here. Anything good that came out of my mouth, I just kind of blame it on my prayer partner. You're right, Reverend Dale Worley. It's so great to be with you all. So I wanted, to, speaking about hope today, I wanted to share this song by a SCAD student, former SCAD student, and someone that I love very much, India Ari, a song called There's Hope. When I had a little, I thought that I needed a lot. A little was overrated, but a lot was a little too complicated. See, zero didn't satisfy me, a million didn't make me happy. That's when I learned a lesson. It's all about your perception. Are you a pauper or a superstar? So you act, so you feel, so you are. It's not about the size of your car. It's about the size of the faith in your heart. There's hope. Doesn't cost a thing to smile. You don't have to pay to laugh. You better thank God for that. There's hope. Doesn't cost a thing to smile. You don't have to pay to laugh. You can thank God for that. In the back country of Brazil, I met a young brother that made me feel that you could accomplish anything. You see, just like me, he wanted to sing. He had no windows and no doors. He lived a simple life, he was extremely poor. On top of all that, he had no eyesight, but that didn't keep him from seeing the light. He said, what's it like in the USA, but all I did was complain, he said, living here is paradise, taught me paradise is in your mind. There's hope, doesn't cost a thing to smile, don't have to pay to laugh, you better thank God for that. There's hope, doesn't cost a thing to smile, don't have to pay to laugh, you can thank God for that. Take it away, Reverend Dale. Somebody's acting crazy If you let it, it'll drive you crazy But I'm taking back my power today See, gas prices keep on rising The government keeps on lying You gotta keep on surviving Keep doing your best, do the best you can There's hope, doesn't cost a thing to smile Don't have to pay to laugh You better thank God for that Yeah, there's hope doesn't cost a thing to smile Don't have to pay to laugh You can thank God for that There's hope Stand up for your eyes Keep shining your light Show the world your smile There's hope Stand up for your eyes Stand up for your rights Stand up for another person's rights Speak up when someone's not being heard. Stand up when someone's not being seen. We're in this together, y'all. There's hope. Hope. There's hope. Mm, yeah. There's hope. Doesn't cost a thing to smile. Don't have to pay to laugh. You better thank God for that. This hope doesn't cost a thing to smile. 
Don't have to pay to laugh You can thank God for that Give it up for Christy Stowe! Christy Stowe! Thank from you so Charlotte, much! Charlotte, North Carolina! We're so happy that you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. So we have five basic unity principles that we teach and practice, and we like to review them on Sunday. So if you would please join me in affirming our five basic principles, our first principle. There is one power and one presence in our lives and in the universe, God. Our second principle, we are the Christ of God in expression. Our third principle we call the law of mind action. Christy talked about it a little bit. What is it? Thought plus feeling equals outcome. Number four, there is power in affirmative prayer and meditation. And number five, we must live the truth that we know. So we are a tithing church. We are part of a tithing movement. I don't know if you um, saw our newsletter this week, but a few months ago, I just we just found out Unity Worldwide Ministries contributed $50,000 to build a school in Laos. So just know that your money is going not only to support our little community here, but it's helping to spread unity all over the world and to help people. So, um, yeah, thank you. Also, don't forget that uh, today is the last day of our food drive. We're collecting food for America's Second Harvest. If you didn't get a chance to donate, you can still run out today before the concert. We're asking everybody who comes to Christie's concert to bring a can of food. So uh, if you haven't contributed already, please do. And if you have, thank you. We've almost filled up both boxes. So really appreciate that. Yeah, give yourselves a hand for that. That's cool. So if you want to contribute financially, if you're watching at home, you can go on our website, unitysavannah.org, and click the donate uh, link. Um, if you brought a love offering with you today, I invite you to get it out and prepare it. Uh, we're going to pray over it. We're going to bless everything that we have and call it good. Uh, if you want to uh, donate with a card, we have our iPad, our giving, our electronic giving station set up in the back. So I have these two lovely uh, leaders in our church who are holding space with us. So let's take just a moment and be still and move into prayer before we move into action. We let our faith in God's good and our hope for the highest good for ourselves and our community bless our offering today and we know that it's all fueled by love that there's only one love and that love is God and we are that love in expression so as our love offering the angels move about the sanctuary we're going to bless you with our love offering song
I've asked Miss Evelyn, one of our licensed teachers, to bless our offering today. And know that as we bless our offering together, we're blessing everything that everybody has and gives and receives. So we're blessing your car. We're blessing your marriage. We're blessing your 401k. Just bring to, to mind something you want to increase in your life. And let's hold that together as we pray. Thank you, dear Heavenly Mother, Father, God. Thank you for this loving substance that we call money and you call love. We thank each and every person that gave from their heart. We know that as we accept and receive, loosen, and let go, that it will come back to us a thousandfold. So we release this to go out into the community and do its perfect work. And as it comes back, we say our arbitrary blessing together. Divine love, as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful. I am thankful, so grateful in this moment. Yeah. What's her name? Ellie. We're going to bless Ellie, too. Come up here. Stand up here with Ellie. So just know that we're all connected. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We're all part of one mind. Yeah. We're all part of one heart. Yeah. And so as we bless another, we bless ourselves. Yeah. As we raise our consciousness, we raise the consciousness of the planet. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to join together in blessing Reverend Christie and the Carolina Center for Spiritual Awakening this morning, knowing that as we bless you and little Ellie and your community, that we're blessing ourselves as well. And we know that uh, Christy has, I, this is what I know about you. You always step out on faith. You'll call me and you'll be like, I don't know. I don't know if I should do this. And you tell me all the reasons your mind said that you shouldn't do it. And then you take the next step anyway. And I admire that so much. So they're moving into a new building in the coolest part of Charlotte. So when you're up there, go to Noda and see them. And just know we're going to use our love offering blessing, our um, um, Unity blessing. We love you. We bless you. Can we have that on the screen, Andrew? So there's a there's I I kind of like a, a closet Pentecostal a little bit, and so yeah, stop. I I like this idea of laying on of hands. So we're gonna lay hands on Reverend Christie virtually. So if you're at home. You're watching this. Even if you're watching the recording, you can raise your hand and bless Christy if you're here. We like to rub our hands together first and get the energy going. And so we say together, Christy, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the light of Christ shining as you. And so it is. With God as your God and your source, you cannot fail. Amen. Your success is assured. It's easy for me to say. Your success is assured. Give it up. Thank you. 
So we have enough time today. If you want, we did uh, end a little bit early on purpose so you can go out and get you some lunch and come back at 1.30. Um, maybe pick up some canned goods and bring them for our uh, food drive or maybe call a friend and say, hey, guess what? Christy Snow is in town and she's doing a concert at 1.30 at Unity, so please come back. And we're also going to be live streaming, yes? Probably. We, yes, we have an hour and a half to work that out. So we'll do our best to get it on the, the web for you too. So uh, thank you for coming today. It's good to see everybody. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I'm really looking forward to moving through the Advent season with you uh, this year. I feel something happening in the world, and it's good. So let's stand and join in our closing song. Let there be peace on earth. on earth a peace that was meant to be with earth as our mother family all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment now step I take, let this be my joyous vow, to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally, let there be peace on earth and let it begin. light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. <laughs>